and welcome to another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. My name is Jesse, and today's tip will be exploring labels in SolidWorks Composer. Labels seem like a simple task in Composer, and they are. Just select a label and select the item you want to label. How much easier could you want it? Here we'll take a look at how to have more control over what the label looks like and what information it's presenting. In this case, we may wish to call out a part name, a subassembly name, or even the top level assembly name to create a view that looks like this. Let's remove this callout and recreate it. By default, my composer references tooltip. This often looks like the part name, but when we try to move a level up to grab the subassembly name, this is not the metadata you were looking for. It's blank. What we'd like our callout to be referencing is the part name itself. This way we can select the level and this will allow us to move up and down the assembly structure. Of course, we can make the adjustment here, but I find it's easier to create a style that will store this information for us. This way, we can make it our default preference or share it with our coworkers for the sake of consistency. I like to set the settings manually first to see how things look. I tweak these settings to make the callouts look the way I wanted them to. I certainly don't want to do this every time, so the style will get this saved for me. To create a style, we need to access the styles workshop. From the workshop tab, we can select styles. From here, we can deselect everything to get access to all available controls, or select something we'd like to target. Let's create a new style by clicking on the icon at the top. Be sure to do this first, or you'll be modifying an existing style. Once we have a new style created, we can choose which properties we'd like to control. In this style, I set the family to annotations, and I controlled the color, font, and size. I set the font to this cool font called Batman Forever to match the marketing I've already done with this project. Any font loaded on the machine can be selected, and you can be as bold or boring as you'd like. Next, we want to make sure we select text and set that to actor name. I'll grab text string as well. I wanted to remove the background box, so we'll set the shape to none, and we'll set the attach type to vertex. We'll also save its width and color. Now we can close down the styles workshop. Don't forget to set this as your default profile for that family first if that's what you want to do. Now if we create a callout that doesn't match that style, we can simply apply it. Now that our callout is set to actor name, we should have no problem when it's time to level up. Don't forget that the collaboration tree also stores all of your annotations, so if you've gotten to the end of a project and you want to change the style across the whole project, you can select them here. This is a great way to easily get your annotations looking consistent and making sure you have access to the metadata you intended. Now you can easily identify components, sub-assemblies, top-level assemblies for identification purposes in views and animations. Well, I hope you found this tip helpful, and I hope to see you back next week for another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.